Go. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the show. And I've got my new friend, Robert. I met Robert yesterday at a little uh, YouTubers get together at Sideways. And uh, nice to meet you, Robert. Where are you from originally? Originally, I'm from Montana. Montana? Yes. Wow. Born and raised. No kidding. Um, I lived in Montana for a very short period back in the 1970s in Billings. Yes. Yeah. I saw that. I saw your video on that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, about me, about my truck driving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was. It's a beautiful state. You know, we used to raft down the Yellowstone River and go fly fishing, and of course the winters. That's the only thing is the winters mm -hmm. there. So. Yeah. I grew up in the Bitterroot, which is south of Missoula. Wow. And it's like this little. It's kind of like a banana belt mm -hmm. type place, and it doesn't get any more than. Well, you uh, couldn't find a more different place yeah, in no. the Philippines than Montana. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. I mean, yeah. Yeah, uh, especially. In, I just left Idaho and I was there for 17 years. That's right, we were talking about yeah. that yesterday. That's another beautiful state. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, I've just always lived in the mountains. Hmm. You know, I just prefer that. Well, how did you end up in the Philippines then? Uh, I first got interested in 1998 mm -hmm. when I was living in Montana. Just happened, that's when I first got the internet, you know, it was becoming yeah. really popular. And I was checking it out. My brother was in the Air Force and he kind of told me about it when he was during Vietnam and stuff. And he told me about the Philippines and I was always interested. Mm. And I thought about the idea of living next to the oceans kind of appealed to me. Yeah. You know, because I'd been to the California coast, Oregon coast so many times and thought, I wouldn't mind living next to the ocean. Oregon's got a beautiful coast. The water's so cold there, you can't I really know. swim in it. Even in California, the water's cold there, too. And the wind. Yeah, and the wind, yeah. The wind is something else. Yeah. Hmm. And so um, you decided to come here. And when was the first time you came to the Philippines to check in it out? 2018. 2018, came so. Came in November. So that was right before the pandemic then? No, I, I came six months later in 2019 and had made plans to come a year later. Yeah. Same time in March. And they shut everything down in okay. 2020. Huh. Yeah, so I. So you've been waiting to come back all this time. Been waiting all this time to come back. Wow. And so, d when did you retire? I retired last year in September. Okay. And finally decided I was going to cut the cord. And I had a buddy that was going to buy my house from me in mm -hmm. by December. Yeah. And I'd been living with my ex a year after we got divorced. She mm -hmm. had one part of the house and I had the other part. Yeah. And she finally left and went to my great relief. And then all of a sudden I get something in the mail from the court. She thought I was selling the house for too little. Mm. And of course it was 100000 more than I paid for it. Yeah. I thought, that's fine. Mm -hmm. but. She wanted to sell market value, which all the prices are just going sky high now. Right. And so with six months, seven months of doing a Zoom call with the judge every month mm -hmm. and trying to figure out what we were going to do with the house. And she hired a lawyer and I just went by myself. Mm -hmm. and then finally, the market prices started to drop. Mm -hmm. So we lowered the price because they wanted 225 Yeah. And I got it down to 190, and it sold within two weeks. That's good. Cash. Mm. And of course, I had to give 50% to her. Right. You know, but yeah. you know, money in hand, I was ready to go. <laughs> mm. That's good, though. You know, that's good. You got like a little nest egg. You know, it's always good when you come over here, and you got your social security, and yeah, yeah. You, know, you got a pension from work or anything? Or I do not. No. 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 Mm. That's good. Yeah, I, I came with enough money to have tucked away that mm. I'll be okay. And so um, you're not going to live here in Dumaguete. You're living in Sikihor, right? Yeah, for now. For now. Later on, I may move to Dumaguete. And for people watching, Sikihor is a small island right off the coast of uh, Negros. As a matter of fact, I can see it from my backyard. Yeah. It's that close. Um, and so um, you'll be going there today, right? Correct. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. I just like to... I just like the quiet, no traffic, mm -hmm. and there's, it doesn't take very long to get to a big store up in Lorena, mm -hmm. and Siggy or I can get pretty much everything I want. There's a little grocery store in San Juan, where I'm at, mm -hmm. so just I just need basic stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and so you're here for the rest of your life, you're going to stay here? Yep. Well, 
done. Now, when did you make that decision? Like, did you come here like when you first uh, came here? Like, it was it 2017? You decided then, or you decided now, or? Oh, I decided probably when I started watching Rike in 2013. Okay, yeah, I watched Rike too. Yeah, in 2013. I actually met him the first time I came. We had dinner at uh, Ayala Mall. Yeah. And I was with my friend Cheryl. She's my friend from Sigiora. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I call her the Island Princess of Sigiora. <laughs> She's <laughs> awesome. But she came all the way with only knowing me on Facebook and picked me up in, in Cebu. Mm -hmm took care of me and got me back to Sigior and it was three after, three days after I was in Sigior I fell in love with it. Mm. I just said this is it. Mm. This is it. Yeah, it seems like everybody that comes to the Philippines, they those that travel around, they just find one place that kind of resonates with them and say that's where I want to be, whether it's Cebu or Dumaguete or Manila, wherever they find that one place that just you know makes it right for them. I'm just gonna use it for home base and if yeah. I want to go somewhere else then Yeah you can always travel and change, yeah. Just hop on a ferry and go. Now, do you plan on uh, going back to America and visiting family or anything, any, like so many times a year, or do you have any plans uh, for that? Or? Eventually, yeah. yeah. I, d I just discovered that I have a granddaughter I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. I was able to see her in Arizona before I left. Okay. But we only had a brief time together because I was, mm. I had already planned to come here, yeah. so. Probably if she got married pretty soon, she's 20. Mm. And, uh, if she has something special going on, I might make a special trip back. But. Mm. And plus, my sister's getting older. She's like nine years older than I am, so she's mm. in her 70s. And uh, if she passed away or something like that or was sick, I would probably go. Yeah. And my parents had passed away years ago, and, mm. and there's only three of us left in the family. So, mm. And my brother just retired about two years now. and. Uh, he moved back to the town my mother and father got married in, Darby, Montana, in uh, oh, wow. 1941. <laughs> mm. And so, um, when you decided to come to the Philippines, like you said, you had a house for a long time, so you must have had a lot of stuff. Was I hard, did. Was it hard to get rid of things, or it do you was. still have things stored back in America? I had a perpetual six-month yard sale. <laughs> yeah. And then right towards the end, I kind of did like you did. Thrift stores, gave it away. And over there, they had a marketplace, you know, on Facebook yeah. and stuff. And I just said, come and get it. Mm. And uh, I have some good enough friends that are selling my cars for me. How many cars do you have? I had two cars. Mm. I had a four-wheel drive pickup and uh, old, uh, and a 92 Crown Victoria. Now, oh, those are good cars. I loved it. Yeah, <laughs> they last forever, car. the old police cars. Yeah, and had a small V8 in it, got great gas mileage. You know, comfortable, oh, reliable. Great travel car. Yeah. Very reliable. Mm. And a friend of mine selling that for me, and, and I took my truck down to Las Cruces, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. My buddy down there, Carl, him and I met uh, when he was teaching in Cebu. And he was a friend of Gio's mm -hmm. also. And we met like four years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of using his house for my home base in America. In mm. Las Cruces, New Mexico. So, uh, as far as mail and stuff, that's how you're getting. It's going to his house. That's good. Yeah. Then he'll just email it to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. Is like you, you really when you come here, you, you really need somebody back in America that's got an address you can use for, like some banks, you know, they'll cancel your your bank account or your credit cards if the, if you're living outside the country if you're not actually living in America. Yeah. And so like, I'm still using my mother's address, but. Um, Eventually, <clears throat> I'm going to have to get another address. I think there's companies that you can use that'll, um, you know, as an address, they'll actually get your mail for you. And so I think they'll they'll scan it for they'll you, scan and it, yeah, scan it to you, things like that. But I've heard of that. I don't get much mail. I don't either. Mostly junk mail. That's one thing I like about the Philippines. I don't get any junk mail. It's like back in America, it's like every day you get your mailbox be stuffed full of. Junk you're throwing mail. more away than you're keeping. Yeah, it's such, such a waste. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and you can't stop it either. I remember going to the post office and I want to stop getting this junk mail. Sorry, sir. You know, you you get it no matter what, whether you like it or not, they send it to you. Yep. Mm. And so, um, what are you doing for uh, for banking and your social security and things like that? I'm using my bank in Idaho still. Okay. I set everything up with them before I left and you told them you were going to the Philippines yep and I've, I've been with them for so many years that they said no problem you just let us know mm. and they set me up 
so that uh, my car doesn't get flagged every six months. Mm -hmm. You know, they set me up for six months at a time. Mm -hmm. And I'm working with one guy there, oops, sorry, and uh, he takes care of me really, really good. That's good. That's a good yeah. thing about a small bank, they look after you. Yeah. And uh, it's just like when you walk in, they know your name, mm -hmm. everything, and I've been with them for so many years that... So you're just drawing right. your money out of the ATM here, or is that what you're yeah, doing? Pretty yeah, pretty much right now, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I also use, I discovered this Pangea, that I can send money to myself. Mm. But I, the only way you can do it is with a U.S. phone, but I have, I get a text message on my U.S. phone. Yeah. Then they gave me a code and I put that in on a computer and mm. I can send myself in, right to Cebuana or anything like that. Mm. You know, right out of my bank account. Well, that's good. And mm. also, I, I have Wise also. So, okay. I can send myself money from my bank account. Yeah, I've never used those before, Transfer Wise. Mm. It, they're very easy. Mm. Extremely easy and very low low rate. Extremely you know, low rate. A lot rate. of my subscribers use that. I think it's almost better to have like to send yourself a chunk every month. You know, you know whatever your budget's going to be, you get that money sent to you. Yeah. Instead of drawing it out, right? You know, two hundred dollar chunks out of the ATMs. Yeah, that's just it. My uh, my Social Security is it's not that much. It's only twelve hundred. But my budget right now. By the time I get done paying my bills, I still got $800 left. Hmm. You know, the way I'm living right now, so. What's your rent? It's 170. Wow, that's cheap. Yeah, and I got my first electric bill, it was 1200. Hmm. And my water bill was 350. And I got a message that uh, my first internet bill's coming in, so I'll check that out when I get home. Well, see, most of the places here in the Philippines come with free internet. Yeah. It would have been nice, but uh, I, I wanted high speed. We, they have a fiber network in Sigior, which is oh, okay. nice. So I got the high speed uh, on mm. the fiber network, and it's 25 bucks a month. Wow, that's cheap. Yeah, PLDT. Mm. And it came with a landline. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, wow. I have a landline. I don't even. I got the number somewhere. I kept the number right on the phone. <laughs> I've My mother back in America has got. Um, <laughs> You know, landline, cable TV, and internet. She's paying like two hundred and seventy dollars a month. It's insane. I know. You know what you're paying for that nowadays in America. You know. That's the same way my niece is. She has, uh, of course, she's quite wealthy, but uh, in Washington State, she's a teacher. Been teaching for twenty five years. She gets paid one hundred and fifty grand hmm. a year. Well, that's a lot for being a, a middle school teacher. Wow. Yeah, Washington State takes. They're unionized. Mm. So they, she does really well. And I said, do you make how much? Mm. <laughs> she goes, yeah. Well, they should but, get paid that much. But her really. cable bill is like 200 a month. Mm. But we kind of like all share. Her brother helps it. He's over in Ferndale, Washington, mm. over on the coast. And uh, he helps her out with it because what we do is we stream off of her internet. Okay. She has Xfinity. Yeah. And I can stream anywhere in the world Wow. on that with my VPN. Yeah. I just put my location in the United States. Mm. That's another thing I suggest to people is get a VPN. Mm. Which one do you have? I have Atlas. Mm. I got it from, uh, I've been watching the war in Ukraine because I'm an ex-army guy. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been following that pretty close. And the guy that I watch, he recommended Atlas because it has the highest security. Because mm. he said over in Ukraine, it's, they're always getting flooded with hackers from mm. Russia. And he said he's never been hacked on this one. Hmm. And Pleasant had a 81% discount to sign up. So what are you paying for it? For $71 for three years. For three years? Wow. Now, do they, how does that work? Do you just like do it all online or do they send you? Uh, uh, yeah, just do it all online. Huh. And uh, then I go to there, I log into the site, everything like that. And I just start using it, tell them where I'm gonna be at, change my location anywhere I want to. Mm. And then I can use my television and, and anything I want in the uh, United States. Hmm. Wow. You know, I should look into that. Hmm. Yeah, but I saw Geo's is called Surfshark. Yeah, I've heard of that one too, yeah. Yeah, that's what Geo recommends and uses. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. But uh, I saw the Atlas one with that discount and the, and the level of security. Cause I've watched YouTube videos about VPNs and some of them promise a lot. Mm -hmm. But you need to do your research on it, you know, for your area and things like that. And it's, make sure you get one that is very reputable. Mm. Because 
there's a lot of them out there that are, are not worth anything. So mm. kind of do research a little bit on it. And I, that's what I did. And I chose Atlas because it, first of all, the discount. And if you don't do the three years, it's a buck ninety nine a month. Hmm. You know, when you first sign up for the first three years. No, but it makes cute. life simple. I can do all my banking. I can do everything with that uh, my location in the United States. And well, can you use more than one device? At a, at a, yeah, any device. It'll connect to everything. Oh wow! To my phone, I can use a VPN. On my phone, I can use it on. Uh, my computer that, that's all I have right now mm. but uh, yeah it, it'll do it you just put the Atlas v, uh, app right on your phone and just when you're using your phone you hit it and collect it and then it's like you're calling from the United States Wow that's good to know that's good to know so you wouldn't need um, like I use magic check you wouldn't need magic check then would you no I could just call on my US phone right from there from the directly to the States huh. Interesting. Mm. But I'm going to hook Magic Jack up anyway, just to, yeah. you know, back up, back up, back up. <laughs> it's in the Philippines. Yeah. I don't know how many times, like, I've had problem with, like, Google and with YouTube, and all of a sudden I'm locked out, and they want to do all this verification. A lot of times it's like a three-step process. They'll send you code, then they'll do this, do that, and if you don't have, like, you know, an American line or American number, it's really tough to, to do the verification, and you can't call somebody up on the phone and customer service at YouTube or Google so that's what I came at. I went into uh, YouTube the other day I signed in and they said well you haven't signed up for two-step verification yet if you're monetized you got to sign up for this right so I did it was really super easy yeah, I've got know, that too yeah. because my channel got hacked about a year and a half ago yeah I lost my channel lost all my videos and everything I it remember was, that yeah, it was yeah. bad I remember that yeah but yeah it's important to do that mm -hmm. Well, so you're late leaving for Sikihor this afternoon, and that'll be good. You go in the fast ferry over there, or the, the They have it. Let everybody know that there's a new line. Yeah. It's called Allison Line that is competing with Ocean Jet now. Oh, really? And Ocean Jet only has two boats a day. Mm -hmm. And Allison has five. Wow. They have five trips back and forth every day. And it's the same price as Ocean Jet, and it's maybe took us an hour okay you know and uh, it was really cool because I sat upstairs and the window there was no windows you could just lean out the window oh nice and it was just awesome fresh cool air coming on you and you bought the ticket right down there at the pier yeah hmm. they're a brand new company they just started they came they had to wait until this last tropical storm went through they're from Iloilo mm -hmm. and they had to wait to bring their boats down but oh. they just started a brand new office here in the port of Dumaguete and in Sigior. Nice. Their office in uh, Sigior doesn't even have a sign yet. That's how new they are. <laughs> yeah. Now, is there a railroad too? Can you take your motorbike on there? Or? Oh, yes. You can, wow. They go several times a day. Nice. Yeah, there, there's, I think there's two different companies, the Mayo Company and there's the other one. I can't remember what the name yeah, of it is. Yeah, one we went on had a really old boat. It was a two-hour trip. It was not yeah. good at all. I know. There's yeah. Some of them are hour 45 minutes and some of them are two. Hmm. And... The when I came over from Dumaguete, it was really nice because they, they had a little place you could buy drinks and snacks and everything at the back of the boat. It was awesome. Wow. Had a movie going on. Really? Wow. Uh huh. It was it was a really nice ride. Huh. Wow. Well, anyway, it was really nice talking to you and best of luck in Sikihor and hope to see you again. Uh, look me up next time you're in Dumaguete. I shall do that, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for subscribing.